Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Somebody there said, Praise the Lord. I'm happy to have you here. Without you, what could we do? But tonight, as the message of power comes to you, your life will turn around. My life will turn around. Say that now. My life will turn around. I don't worry about the things happening around you there. That rain is coming from heaven. Another rain is coming from heaven. The rain of power. The rain of deliverance and the rain of salvation for everyone. What are you there? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you because we know with you all things are possible. And we know that tonight you are going to touch, you are going to reach everyone. You reach our soul, you reach our spirit, you reach our body, you reach our circumstances, and great things are going to happen here tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that every word of promise, every word of power, every word of testimony that comes out, you multiply it to take effect in every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down tonight as we come in the name of the Lord with the assurance of the Lord or the power of the Lord the Lord tonight will visit you will touch you where you are and will do great wonderful things in every life in Jesus name we're here because of the God of all possibilities the God who is able able to save able to sanctify able to heal able to deliver able to transform every life able to change everything in the past and change it in such a way that the people who saw you yesterday when they see you tomorrow they might not recognize you because of the mighty power of the lord that will touch you tonight in jesus name Tonight, we're talking about the miraculous possibilities in the mercy of Jesus. The miraculous possibilities in the mercy of Jesus. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 9, and we're reading from verse 27. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him crying and saying thou son of david have mercy on me that those blind men they came asking for the mercy of jesus and as you come tonight and you are asking for the mercy of Jesus like miracles attended them miracles will attend you as you get as you have as you possess the mercy of the Lord tonight in Jesus name in verse 28 verse 28 says and when he was come into the house the blind men came to him they came to him they came not to the apostles not to the pastors who are there not to the leaders ministers who are there they came unto him jesus and that's the one you come to tonight and when people came to christ those days like today he always blesses them he always turns their life around their lives around and he always performs the miracle of mercy in their lives and tonight as they came and you come and you come to him the miracle of mercy will meet you there 
and you will not run back home before the miracle of mercy gets to you because that miracle of mercy is coming now and then it says and jesus says unto them believe ye that i'm able to do this and they said unto him yea lord yes lord the lord is asking you that problem you have what you think is big i understand is big for you it's small for jesus it's normal for jesus to touch people like you and to remove all the infirmity all the problem all the sickness everything you have troubling your life here we have come today and the god of mercy will touch you in jesus name he asked them do you believe that i the son of god i the christ i the savior i the lord i your healer and redeemer do you believe that i can do this and he said yes lord when you say yes lord unto him that finalizes your problem that settles your problem yes lord i know you can to remove all my sin i know you can to change my life and remove the powerlessness of my life and give me the power to go and live in newness of life yes i know you can i know you will and then to take all the demonic powers and forces tormenting me and troubling me to take all that away yes i know you can and when you say yes to the lord that you know he can it will work in your life this night you will not miss the miracle working power of god and then in verse 29 it tells us it says then touched he their eyes he'll touch the blind eyes tonight he'll touch those limb legs tonight it will touch all those areas where you have the challenge and the problem tonight and it will take away every pain you feel it will take away every oppression in your life it will take away everything that is making your life not stable not peaceful and not steady and it touched their eyes saying according to your faith be it unto you but in verse 30 it says and their eyes were opened and your eyes will be opened and your legs will receive strength and your heart will receive strength and the impossibility of your life tonight will become a testimony we're looking at the miraculous possibilities in the mercy of jesus in the mercy of jesus jesus the same yesterday today and forever and his mercy remains the same yesterday today and forever and his power and his love and his compassion everything and its attributes remains the same yesterday today and forever and as you are there the mercy of the lord will meet you right there his compassion will meet you right there his salvation will get to you right there and the new life eternal life will get to you right there and your miracle of healing and your miracle of deliverance will get to you right there tonight in jesus name and their eyes were opened it will open your eyes the miraculous possibilities in the mercy of jesus three things we're looking at number one number one his manifold mercy for the recovery of the sick is manifold mercy for the recovery of the sick number two is mediatorial mercy for the release of slaves Medi mediatorial he mediates for us 
He pleads for us. He's the one in heaven representing you, standing in for you before the heavenly Father. He sits on the right hand of majesty and is there on your behalf. And when you pray, he adds his authority. He adds his decree. He adds his agreement to the prayer you pray. And he says, Father, that's the one I died for. And he's asking for the benefit of my death, for the benefit of my resurrection. That is the one I died for. He's asking for salvation. He's asking for recovery. He's asking for restoration. He's asking for renewal of life. And because he died for you, and because he mediates for you on the right hand of majesty on high, that's why tonight, that's mercy will reach you there. Yeah. Number three, his multiplied mercy for the renewal of all souls. His multiplied mercy for the renewal of all souls. He will renew you today. Yeah. He will revive you today. Yeah. He will restore Everything you ought to have in a spiritual life, he restored that to you tonight in Jesus. And number one, number one, the manifold mercy for the recovery of the sick. We're looking at Nehemiah chapter 9. I read from verse 19. I want you to see something here. Listen to me if you don't have a Bible there. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 19. Yet thou in thy manifold mercies. That's it. That's it. In the manifold mercies of the Lord. And he says I am God. I change not. He had manifold mercies on the people at that time. And he still has manifold mercies for everyone. And at this time, like he delivered them of good old days, he will deliver you. It says, you didn't forsake them in the wilderness. The pillar of the cloud departed not from them by day to lead them in the way. Neither the pillar of fire by night to show them the light and the way wherein they should go. It tells us in verse 20, it says in verse 20, Thou givest also thy good spirit to instruct them because of his manifold mercies and withheldest not thy manna from their mouth because of his manifold mercies and gavest them water for their thirst. In verse 27, verse 27 says, Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies when they went away from him who vexed them and in the time of their trouble when they cried unto thee in the time of their trouble when he cried unto thee and in your time of trouble as you call on the Lord and you cry unto the Lord and you send your SOS save our soul you send that to God the Lord, because of his manifold mercy, he will answer you. Thou hadest them from heaven. And according to thy, look at this, look at this. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou givest them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. And the manifold mercy of the Lord today will save you will forgive you will take that cord of sin that binds you and ties you up today you'll have forgiveness freedom redemption and the salvation of the lord i want you to look at uh, matthew chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 20 matthew chapter 20 verse 30 in matthew chapter 20 verse 30 it says and behold two men sitting by the wayside when they heard that jesus passed by that jesus 
passed by, anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He passed by. He's passing by your side right there. I said is passing by your side right there and the Lord will take away the infirmity the impossibility you have in your life he passed by and they were told they cried out saying have mercy don't talk about marriage have mercy don't talk about your good works have mercy don't talk about your riches have mercy don't talk about your goodness have mercy don't talk about your religion have mercy on us O lord thou son of david look at verse 31 in verse 31 and the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, The people who could not help them, the people who could not perform the miracle on them, they told those two blind men, they said, Shut up. Satan will not shut you up. The followers of Satan will not shut you up. Enemies that are acting like friend will not shut you up. You know, they were acting like, you know, we are friends. What if you ask and you are disappointed? What if you ask and you get nothing? You'll be so disappointed, you'll be deserting, you'll not even want to, you, you know, do anything any other way. And so they said, shut up, keep quiet. Even those of us that can see, we're not getting any attention from him. But they didn't keep quiet until your miracle arrives, you will not keep quiet. Until the power of the Lord will touch you, you will not keep quiet. The devil will not shut your mouth at the time of prayer. <laughs> Let me hear you. You will not go to sleep at the time of prayer, at the time when the mercy of God, the miracle of God, and the healing of God, and the salvation of God is coming to you from heaven. Nothing will shut your mouth in Jesus' name. And so they cried the most, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Look at verse 32. We're told in verse 32, and Jesus stood still and called them, and called them, and called them. If Jesus calls you, will you answer? I said, if Jesus calls you, will you answer? Now, how does Jesus call us today? Look at the big man there. Look at the honorable man there. Look at the highest placed man there. He wants Mr. So-and-so. And the high man, he doesn't stand up and then go to him and say, I want you. He sends somebody. And you say, go tell so-and-so that I, Mr. Honorable, I am calling her, I am calling him. And then that person will go there and say, Ma, sir, Mr. Honorable so-and-so is calling you. And that man will get up. He knows that messenger came from Mr. Honorable. And then he will follow him and get to the high man. What am I telling you? Now, when Jesus calls today, it's high in heaven. It's great in heaven. It's by the right hand side of majesty on high. He sends us, me, errant boy. He said, go call him. Go call her. And I came tonight. I'm not the one calling you. I'm just an errant boy evangelist. I say, Jesus, the great one. Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Healer, Jesus the Deliverer 
is calling you. And then, as I tell you, don't, don't think about me and say, uh huh, he is so and so. It belongs to that. It belongs to that. I'm not the one. Jesus calls you tonight. I said, Jesus calls you tonight. Online, as you are there. Do I know you? But Jesus knows you. And you are there over the radio, over the television. Do I, do I know you? But Jesus knows you. And he uses his errand boy evangelist to come and tell you, Sir, man, boy, girl, man, woman, is calling you. You will rise up when the time comes. You raise up your hand. You give your heart, your life to Jesus. And as you answer that call, it will forgive your sin. It will save your life. The search, he calls thee. He called them. And he said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? Look at verse 33. Verse 33, they say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. That our eyes may be opened. Verse 34, it says, So Jesus had compassion on them. That's what they were asking for compassion mercy the love of god that comes from heaven and that love that's the love that saves us that's the love that redeems us that's the love that heals us that's the love that takes the pain and the sickness and the infirmity away from our body he had compassion on them and touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him and they followed him why did they follow him after all they've got the sight and their healing they said we have other needs and so if he has done this one as we follow, we're not going to be far from him anymore we're going to be following him so that any other need in our lives in our soul in our spirit in our body in our family he has done this one and there is more from where that came from there is more that miracle one miracle came and he said there is more there are more miracles where that false miracle came from as you come to the Lord today and he forgives you and he gives you recovery you want to understand in the treasury of God that's not the only miracle available there is more from where that came from there is more from where where that came from because of that you keep on follow him i will follow jesus i will follow jesus rain or sunshine i will follow jesus in my city in my village i will follow jesus in my apartment from now on i will follow jesus and as you follow him all other needs in your life will be given unto you in jesus name his manifold mercy for the recovery of the sick. We'll come to number two. Number two, his mediatorial mercy for the release of slaves. His mediatorial mercy. That mediatorial mercy, the mercy of the mediator, the mercy of the one that stands by the right hand of God in heaven. The mercy of the one and the mediation of the one that stands and represents you. As you think about him and you pray unto him, you come to him and you say, you are my mediator. I accept you. I accept no other one. I rely on you. I rely on no other one as mediator. You are my mediator tonight. He will release you. 
I said it will release you. It will release you from slavery. Look at this in First Timothy chapter 2. And I'm reading there from verse 3. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Verse 4, it says, Who will have all men to be saved? He wants all men to be saved. He desires, he wants to have all men. You there, you there, over there, anywhere you are, he desires that all men shall be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Saved, one, then to come as we follow him to the knowledge of the truth, the truth of his release, the truth of his redemption, the truth of his righteousness, the truth of his revelation. After he saves us, he doesn't want to just leave us there and born again now. All right, when a child is born, the mother knows that a job has not finished. He'll clean up that child. He will feed that child. She will give knowledge to that child. What does that child know about the world into which he is born? It is the ongoing training, teaching, instruction of the mother that will make the child now to know the knowledge of the truth of the world he has now come into. And when you are born again, you are born again by the Spirit of the Lord, then you are saved. But you need to keep on now with the Lord to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, for there is one God and one mediator, mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Then in verse 6, it tells us, it says, who gave himself a ransom for all, for you, for me, for us all, for those who are here, for those who have heard, for those who have not heard. He gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 1, and you are see quickened, made alive, revived, restored, regenerated, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Then in verse 2, it says, wherein in time past ye walked according to the cause of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, of disobedience. Hey, hold on, look at this. We were slaves to disobedience, but now is mediation. His redemption, his power, his sacrifice came to release us from the slavery of disobedience. Actually, number one, there's been addiction in our lives. We're addicted to something, maybe substance. We're addicted to something, maybe liquid. We're addicted to something and we couldn't do without that. And that addiction is spoiling and destroying our lives. We became slaves of addiction. And Christ came in his mediation and he came to release us. He came to save us. He came to set us free from the slavery to addiction. We were in a slavery to be bad behavior, bad behavior. And people were saying, I this man, 
is this woman having bad behavior like this? It's slavery. And we could not dis deliver ourselves. It's the mediation of the Lord Jesus Christ. What he did on the cross of Calvary that came to release and to set free the slaves of bad behavior. Now, we ask addiction, slavery to carnality. We were just not spiritual. Our language, carnal. Our thinking, carnal. Our disposition, carnal. Everything about us, we may look nice on the outside, but we were slaves to carnality. And Jesus came to release and to set the slaves of carnality free. It will set you free tonight. But we're slaves to disobedience. The right way says, go this way. But because we're slaves, the chains of disobedience were in our leg, on our hands, on our neck, on our spirit, on our soul. As slaves to disobedience, Christ came as the mediator. And he says, I'll break every yoke in your life. Amen. Yeah. I will release you from the slavery to disobedience. The Lord will do it in Jesus' name. We were slaves to evil. Slaves to evil. The goodness of God is all around, but because these are slaves, and as slaves, we didn't have any way to release ourselves your release has come tonight everything that is evil evil character evil conduct evil direction evil decision everything that is evil that you are changed to and you know it that I want to even do evil, but when I plan to do it, when I want to do good, evil is present with me. I have good intention, and I have good aspiration, and I have good ambition, but the evil I don't want to do, that is what I do. We were slaves to evil, F. We were slaves to filthiness, filthiness, filthy behavior in the night when other people are not there behind the curtain when other people are not there and my neighbors will not know this my friends will not know this and those who are very close to me they will not know this because it's in the dark and we use the darkness for the filthiness of the flesh and one day you said it's enough i don't want to do this again but then you're pulled back to that again why because of slavery and that slavery tonight the lord will set you free you've been in that slave trade and you are even getting other people to that slavery in filthiness but tonight the Lord will set you free. And your companions in filthiness, the Lord will set them free. Everyone tonight, as you call on the name of the Lord, and you say, I want release from the slavery of addiction, of bad behavior, of carnality, of disobedience, of filthiness, of evil, and then uh, from uh, the guilty gratification. You, you gratify yourself. You say you are enjoying something. Uh, all it brings is guilt. All it brings is condemnation. And because you know that you've struggled, you've tried, you've prayed, you've desired, and yet that slavery is there tonight the lord will set you free that's why it says wherein in time past you walked according to the course of 
this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit the spirit of slavery that now walketh in the children of disobedience and then he tells us in verse 3 it says in verse 3 among whom also we had a conversation in times past in the lusts of the flesh fulfilling desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of us even as others look at verse 4 here is the good news here is how redemption comes and release comes from uh, that slavery but god who is rich in mercy why it not for the mercy of god the mediation of the mediator would not have reached you but because of the mercy of god mediatorial mercy he now comes to you god who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us verse 5 uh, then tells us even when we were dead in sins he has quickened us together with Christ by grace are you saved that grace will come to you tonight and when the grace comes to a slave the grace will not leave him in that addiction in that bad behavior in that carnality in that disobedience in that evil the grace of god will not leave him will not leave her in filthiness and guilty gratification the grace of god will get you out and set you free tonight and tomorrow you still remain free all the rest of your life you still remain free as you are following jesus and you are drinking in and taking it as grace as grace as grace that saved you will keep you saved in jesus name look at verse 8 it says in verse 8 for by grace are you saved we don't have to walk for it we don't have to search for it we don't have to go to river jordan to the depth of the sea to look for it we don't have to go to jerusalem israel anywhere where you are that grace of god will reach out to you and set you free from the slavery tormenting your life for by grace are you saved and it says it is through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god mercy bringing gift from heaven the gift of salvation the gift of release the gift of the righteousness of christ it brings that gift to you tonight it is the gift of god are you waiting for the gift i said are you waiting for the gift the gift of salvation the gift of release from slavery it will give you tonight in jesus name. we're looking at number three now number three is multiplied mercy multiplied for the renewal of all souls it will renew you it will transform you it will change everything that needs to be changed in your life in your heart in your spirit in your soul and renewal righteousness will come to you tonight in jesus name we're looking at psalm 51 reading from verse 1 psalm 51 verse 1 have mercy upon me oh god it's always by the mercy of god whether well, it's manifold mercy it's mercy whether it's mediatorial mercy it's mercy or multiplied mercy it is mercy that comes and gives you the renewal the multiplied mercy for the renewal of all souls have mercy upon me upon me say upon me you know there are people that come to god and they say we have sinned uh-huh have mercy on us uh-huh 
Show mercy to the world. You have not started praying. We're all thirsty. Uh -huh. Give water to everyone on earth. Uh -huh. And give refreshing to everyone in the world. You have not started asking. You must ask for yourself. You are the one that feels the chain of the bondage of sin. And so David came like you ought to come. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions and then in verse 2 it says wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity cleanse me from my sin it's when you call upon the lord like that and you make it personal the lord will forgive all your sins Look at verse 10. In verse 10, create in me personal. You come to the Lord and you say, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. And as you ask tonight, you will not be denied. The salvation of the Lord is for the young. Is for the old, is for the boy and the girl, is for the man and the woman, is for the lowly, is for the high. We know we have all sinned, you know you have sinned, and you come to the Lord and you say, I need recovery from my sickness, I need release from my slavery, I need renewal for my soul. Look at uh, someone. Three, and I'm reading there from verse 1. Psalm 103 verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the, his holy name. Verse uh, 2. Who bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, all his multiplied mercies and then it says in verse 3 it says in verse 3 who forgiveth all thine iniquities that's what you have tonight it will forgive all your iniquities who healeth all thy diseases the lord will forgive and the lord will heal all your diseases in jesus name and then in verse 4 it says who redeemeth thy life from destruction and who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies multiplied mercies multiplied mercies to give you salvation to give you redemption to give you healing to give you deliverance on the basis of his multiplied mercies and then in verse 5 he tells us who satisfies thy mouth with good things he'll satisfy you tonight so that the youth is renewed like the eagles renewal has come for who renewal for who restoration for who recovery for who and all the blessings that we need that christ paid for on the cross of calvary for who your time has come salvation has come healing has come deliverance has come the lord will renew you restore you save you change your life take the judgment the punishment of sin away from your life and the lord will get you ready for heaven in jesus name let's bow and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed. You want that salvation? You want 
that relieves from slavery. You're being a slave to all those things, and your life is not as righteous as it ought to be, as acceptable to God as it ought to be. And you, you say, I recognize now, I didn't have any power to set myself free, but Christ has the power, the power to forgive, the power to renew, the power to bruise all the slaveholder in your life and get rid of everything. It's bowed and eyes closed as you want that forgiveness and that salvation now anywhere you are. Raise up your hand. You say, Lord, I'm here. I am here. I must have that redemption, that remission of sin, that removal of sin, that blotting out of all my sin. I must have that tonight. And this is the moment. If you're raising up your hand, please stand up wherever you are. Because now the salvation of Christ, from Christ, by Christ, is coming to you now. Raise up your hand and stand up. He's the one calling you. He calls you. And he says, get up. Come to me. I want to forgive you. I want to save you. I want to change your life. I want to break that chain of slavery. Slavery to sin in your life. Raise up your hand and stand up. God bless you there. God bless you. Online, online, wherever you are, you've been bound by the chains and the shackles of sin. Maybe people don't know, but you know, wherever you are there, in the privacy of your room, in the chamber where you are, in the congregation where you are, raise up that hand and say, yes, Lord, it's me. I must have uh, that salvation, that forgiveness, and that regeneration renewal tonight. Raise up that hand and stand up. I'm praying with you now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for everyone responding now to your call. I pray, Lord, forgive them in Jesus' name. I pray that you take all their sins, bundle them together, and put all those sins in the sea of God's forgetfulness. That you will not remember any of those sins against them anymore. Take the power, break the power of sin from their lives. Take the pollution of sin away from their lives. Lord, pardon them. Forgive them. Save them. Give them a new life in Christ, even tonight in Jesus' name. Let your spirit bear witness with their heart. Their sins are forgiven. Their lives are transformed. They have the salvation of the Lord and give them the grace to keep on following after Christ from this time on. The joy of salvation, the peace in salvation, and the victory in salvation be given to every one of you in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please, uh, friend, keep on standing. Uh, a counselor will come to you there. And they will, they will not take a long time. You feel those papers. It will help us to keep on uh, helping you as you follow Christ. I call on our pastor to take care of this session before I come back to pray for your healing. Amen. We are happy for you. You have gotten something that the Lord has brought you here for. As you have given your life to Jesus, you have gotten the best gift and the miracle of mercy. So counselors, all our workers, the choir leaders, 
quickly moving now and begin to take their details. Move as fast as possible so that we can reach as many that have given their lives unto the Lord. You remember? Get their full names, their phone numbers, and their addresses. Then remember also, we have special convert lunch hour by 3 p.m. We had it yesterday, today, and we are having it also tomorrow by 3 p.m. So, let's quickly do that, counselors. Move on and begin to do your best. Be as fast as possible. If you're also watching online and you have gotten the message of salvation, you have identified with Christ, there is a link on your screen now. Please click it, fill the form there, so that we can assist you in your newfound faith. You're a believer, you're a child of God, you need to be helped. As our Father in the Lord said, if a woman gives birth to a baby, she has started greater work of nursing, cleaning, building up, teaching how to live in this environment, in this world. So likewise, you're a new believer, a child of God now. That's why we are getting your details in order to help you and to assist you in your newfound faith. Either you are listening on radio or television, you have given also your life to the Lord Jesus. You send your names, the phone numbers, and your location where you are. All over the globe, either through WhatsApp or SMS to this very number plus 234 915 444 9263 please take the number again plus 234 915 444 92 Six three. There will be special lunch hour with Jesus tomorrow after service. By it will be immediate after the service tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow is the last Sunday of the month, and we are all those that are in Mina here. We are coming for special, special Sunday service, and it's for all. Remember, this place is not a church, but we use it for the crusade and for all other things. So please, all are invited. The Sunday service is meant for all. And in other countries, other locations in Nigeria, Africa, is a special, special combined service. So... Don't miss it at all. Our Father in the Lord, the convener of GCK, is going to minister unto us all over the globe. So be available and be partaker of this very program. So, counselors, move now and write the details of this, our brethren, brothers and sisters that have identified themselves that they want to serve this Lord. The Lord has forgiven them. The servant of God has prayed for them. They are now children of God. Your sins are forgiven. You are pardoned. You have obtained the mercy of God now. 
For the rest of us here now, begin to pray. Remember, remember, the man of God said that today there will be abundance of rains of miracle. Something big is coming your way. If you believe it, can I hear you say GCK Amen? Can I hear your amen again? Your miracles are confirmed already in Jesus' name. Amen. So you begin to pray for yourself and say, Lord, I will not let you go except you bless me, except you heal me, except you deliver me. Begin to pray as you wait now. Counselor, counselors, we are waiting for you. Our Father is ready for you. Be fast, please. Do your best. Be fast. Those that can write, let them write on their own. Those that could not, then help them so that we can be fast to cover it. Counselors, the leaders that have the flags, check your area. If the council is done, then begin to wave the flags for us. You wave it so that we can see that you are true. On my right hand side, if you are finished, can you wave the flag for us to see? Okay, no flags yet. Out of my front, at the center here, if you are finished, can you raise the flag, please? Okay, be fast about it. Out of my left hand side, Quickly, quickly, if you are finished, can you wave the flags so that we know that you are finished? Because the man of God is loaded. The anointing is here. The power is here. And that miracles, rays of miracle will come down. You know, the Lord has blessed us the first night, the second night yesterday, today being the third night. It will be a special night indeed. Can I hear amen? amen? Begin to pray for yourself and your miracle will come your way. Counselors, we are still waiting for you, please. If you are finished, just wave the flags now. Okay? By my left hand side, is done. Out of center here. If you are finished, lift up your hand very well and wave it. By my left hand, they have, they have waved the flags out of our center. You are outside there also, in any part of the globe. Attend to the new convert. Thank you. I'm seeing flags at the center back. Out of my right. I'm not seeing flag there because the converts are many actually. They are coming to the Lord. We are happy for that. Counselors, by my right hand side, you are the one we are waiting for. So others, if you have finished your side, quickly move to my right hand side and attend to the brethren. Let's get their details. Don't forget that Monday and Tuesday will be ministers, professional, businessmen and women at Deeper Life Campground, Chachanga, Abuja Road. We have been enjoying the blessing of the Lord on Friday and today. And we still have two more days. All ministers, church founders, businessmen and women professionals, all are for you. Come along and get the secret of success. Secret that will build you up and that you will never remain the same. We that have been coming, we are enjoying the blessings. Counselors, by my right hand, I have not seen flags at all. Quick, quick, please, so that we can do the blessing and waiting you is there for you. Remember, there will also be 
global convocation program of Father and the Lord is moving to Ibadan. Immediately after here, on 30th, there will be a special program for all our youth all over the globe. It's global. So let's prepare for it. And let's be praying for our Father in the Lord. As your heart is a man of vision, man of burden, man that wants to reach out to all categories of people all over the globe. Counselors, by my right hand, Others are finished. Can you wave, please? Okay, thank you very much. Our father is ready now, he's coming. Shall we stand up on our feet as we welcome him for our miracles? <coughs> You're welcome, Daddy. Praise the Lord. Your miracle time has come. My miracle time has come. Yeah. Say it for yourself. Yeah. Now, did you see those uh, people that received their sight? They were the people that mentioned their problems. What do you want him to do for you? And they said that we might receive our sight. You are the one to mention the problem. Don't wait for me to mention this problem, that problem. Once you mention the problem, I will give confirmation from here. Miracle will happen in your life. You raise up one hand. You lay the other hand where you have the problem. Everywhere, in every congregation, in every stage in our country here, every nation, every country, in Africa, everywhere, America, Canada, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, tell the Lord what the problem is. You want your blind eyes to open, tell him. You want strength for your waist, for your legs, for your hands, tell him. You want that shorter leg to grow out, tell him. You have any internal problem you want him to touch? And you want him to heal, deliver, set you free? Tell him. And as you've told him, I bring confirmation to your desire, to your request, now in Jesus' name. Keep up that hand and keep the other hand, lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we know whenever we mention that name, you never say no. You always say yes. And Lord, I pray for everyone, whatever the challenge may be, from the top of the head to the tip of the toe, internal, external, I pray, touch them, Heal them now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that great miracle, supernatural miracle, great healing, supernatural healing for everyone who has mentioned their problem unto you. Stretch forth that miracle walking hand now. Heal them in Jesus' name. Mountain of sickness, mountain of slavery, mountain of infirmity, mountain of long standing problem. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Search. Everyone free. Yeah. 
to the right, to the left, to the center, over the radio, over television, online, everywhere, manifest your miracle of mercy. We know it is done. It is done. In Jesus' name I pray. I got I got my own. I got my own. Check up where you had the problem before. The problem is gone. And whatever you were not able to do before, if you were deaf, now you can hear. You were blind, now you can see. You were lame, now you can rise up and walk. You had internal bleeding, internal problem. The Lord has touched you now. A miracle is there on your body in Jesus' name.